Ladies and gentlemen, we have a superstar with us today. We have eighth grade scholar Shanice Scott. She is one of our gold winners. She's on two billboards in our community. She's an eighth grader at Kennedy Road Middle School, and she is going to call our meeting to order. The meeting is now called to order. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We ask at this time if you please place all electronic communication devices on silent or vibrate. Please place all electronic communication devices on silent or vibrate, and we're going to do our prayer and pledge. Our prayer will be by Leader Holmes of the 3rd District and a scholar at Griffin High School, Jordan Silas, will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Father God, we come right now in no other way but bowed head, humble hearts. Lord God, we come first to say thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, we come to ask that you will just pour into us so that we will make the best decision for the constituents and all concern in this community. We ask, Lord God, that you give us insight onto things that we may not already know. And we ask these things knowing that you can and you will. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Ms. Silas, for leading us in our Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we're on item number two of our agenda, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Griffin Spalding County School Spotlight. Our school that we are spotlighting today is Jackson Road Elementary. Jackson Road, are you in the house? Awesome. Come on up, Principal Robinson. So school name, Jackson Road Elementary. How many scholars attend your school? 375. What is your mascot? The Wildcats. How many faculty and staff members work at your school? 58 total Jackson Road Elementary employees, including teachers, paraprofessionals, office staff, custodians, and cafeteria staff. A quote from Principal Robinson on why she loves being the proud principal. I am honored and proud to be the principal of Jackson Road Elementary School. This is my fifth year of holding the honor. During the past five years, I can truly say that I have watched our parentals, Scholars and staff perform amazing things. The Jackson Road Elementary School staff, scholars, and parentals work together to make good things happen for other people. What good things are going on at the school, socially and educationally? Jackson Road Elementary School K through second students grew 31% from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year on the OG benchmark assessments. Let's give it up for them. Not only that, more specifically, 31% of more of our scholars achieve mastery on this assessment. Let's give it up for them again. <laughs> on the winter map assessment, our third grade scholars grew 14% in meeting grade level Lexile expectations on the winter map. Let's give it up for them again. <laughs> Last but not least, our fifth grade scholars grew 12.9% in the same area. Our projected proficiency in math and reading for third through fifth grade has also increased. Jackson Road Elementary School would like to brag on our parents and community. We had a record of 353 families attend our annual Night of Lights in December. We also had a record-breaking attendance for our daddy-daughter dance on February 16th. Jackson Road Elementary continues to be blessed with such a wonderful community. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, let's give it up for Jackson Road Elementary School as our spotlight. If you would join us, Principal Robinson, Jackson Road has the uh, distinct privilege and honor of being in the Omnipotent First District. So I will present our principal with this spotlight. Thank you so much.
All right, now it is time for our school system announcements. I'd like to turn it over to the gentleman from the Sacred Second, Vice Chairman Will Doss. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to invite Ms. Jordan Silas back to the podium. She is a 12th grader at Griffin High School, Vice President of FBLA, Student Conductor at Griffin High School, National Honor Society, Beta Club. She plans to uh, major in journalism. Her first college choice is Georgia State University. Other colleges she's interested in is Howard University and Hampton University. And more importantly, she gave a Tuesday night on a week break to be here. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Give us our now. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Chairman Brown, members of the board, Superintendent Simmons, my name is Jordan Silas. I'm a senior at Griffin High School. I would like to pre present and thank the Board of Education for involving the scholars of, of the district in the policy and legislative process. The announcements for the February 21st, 2023 Board of Education meeting are as follows. February 20th to the 24th, Griffin Spalding County School System's Presiden Pre President's Day holiday winter break is held. Um, March 6th through the 10th, National School Breakfast Week. March 6th through the 10th also, National School Social Worker Week. Tuesday, March 7, 2023, Griffin Spalding County Board of Education Work Session located at 216 South 6th Street, Griffin, Georgia 30223. Um, this concludes the announcements for this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Silas. We have heard the announcements. This time we are moving on to item number four, the adoption of the agenda. What is the pleasure of this board? Thank you so much, Leader Holmes. It has been properly motioned by Leader Holmes of the third. Is there a second? Second. It has been seconded by the dean of this board, Dean Barbara Jo Cook. And what is the pleasure of this board to vote by raising your right hand? Motion passes, 5-0. Recognitions up from the formidable fifth district, our chairwoman emeritus, the Honorable Sue McDonald. Good evening, everyone. Uh, to begin with our recognitions tonight, we have the maintenance work-based learning students, Mr. Ballard, who is obviously with a work-based learning student as we speak. Can anyone add anything to that that's in the house tonight about that situation, that program? Yeah, so if we would, if Dr. Warren, if you would give us a, a synopsis of what work-based learning is, and then I'll tell why they're here tonight. So you can do it from, you can. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, our work-based learning program can um, enable students to, while they're in school, um, sophomore, junior, senior year, to work um, in the afternoon, after school, sometimes during the school day, if they're senior, that have accrued enough credits, and a career field of their choice. We have um, young men and young women that work in our HR department, finance, um, being clerks or assistants in the office, um, preparing data reports, um, as well as maintenance. I see several young men here in maintenance today. So that's uh, pretty much a thumbnail sketch of the work these students incorporate. They get paid, so they get <laughs> valuable experience as well as earned income. Thank you so much to our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Donna Warren. I visited the facilities and maintenance department after the tornadoes happened, and I was impressed to see scholars that have put in so much of their time and hours while other scholars were at home sheltering in place and doing other things but we had three scholars that were out there working so that our schools would be in a better condition. And so on behalf of this board and the district, to those work-based learning scholars, thank you so much for going above and beyond and doing what you did best, making sure that your community is taken care of. And so this time we'll have Mr. Adam Pugh, our Director of Communications. That's right. We've, we had some exceptional work-based learning students that were working with the maintenance department to, to go above and beyond and clean up after the, the tornado. So as I call you, if you'll come forward, we'll get a, a photo uh, of you guys and, and your certificates. Uh, Rhett Samples is not here this evening, but we recognize him anyway. Jaron Bellini, 
is not here either this evening, but we'll still recognize him by calling his name. And Austin Boggs. thankful for Austin and I think his whole family works for us so uh, we appreciate the whole Boggs family Right next, we have the uh, 2022 City of Griffin Middle School Water Tower Challenge winners, Ms. Tolliver. Good evening, Chairman, Board Members, and Superintendent Dr. Simmons. Each year, the Georgia Association of Water Professionals hosts the Model Water Tower Competition with the mission from today's youth come tomorrow's leaders. Let's lead some, of the water some to the water profession. The model water tower competition is designed to provide information to youth about water resource engineering, infrastructure, water treatment, and water conservation in hopes that some will become future water professionals. The contest is for middle schools and it allows students to learn about the water profession through a fun field hands-on science project. The students learn that a water tower has three main components, an elevated tank, a riser pipe, and a structure to elevate the tank. In addition, students experience what it is like to be an engineer for a day by solving issues with their towers and trying to come up with the best design based on, based on provided limited specifications. The towers are tested to make sure that they meet the specifications for both materials and dimensions. Here to present the student winners with their awards is Mr. Brandon Lewis, Director of the City of Water Waste of the, of the City of Griffin Water and Wastewater Department, and Mr. Mike Melton, Water Operations Manager. As I call your name, if you have your water tower, you can come and place it on top of the podium and receive your rewards. Our third place winner is Mr. Jeremy Vessel from Rehoboth Road Middle School, and he also won. <laughs> Jeremy takes $100 with him, as well as uh, best presentation. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeremy. Congratulations. Great. Have him stay. Have him stay so he can pick. Jeremy, can you come back and stand up here while they present the other awards as well? Just stand right here in front of our uh, tables. Thank you. In, in front of Mr. Brown. Miss Abigail Anderson, second place, $200. doesn't look like she's with us this evening. And then we have, um, last but not least, Miss Sky Odawarin, first place, $300. Artistic design, first place, structural engineering and cost effectiveness. <laughs> Let's give these students another round of applause. Can she use this one? Okay.
So I built this water tower out of an empty laundry detergent bin, as well as shelves for a leg, as well as a little bin that holds uh, <coughs> magnets. And so I basically taped them together and I also used some glue at the bottom and I use some rubber bands to support it up here so, it doesn't, so that the weight of the water inside the tank does not make it come down. And so I connected a pipe up here at where the laundry detergent has a button so that the soap can come out. And then when this is connected to a pump, the water goes through and goes into this bin. And when the pump is stopped, the water comes back out through here. And then I also put a little vent at the top so it's visible as what is inside of the water tower. Thank you so much, Sky, for sharing your engineering prowess. I would also like to share that uh, Sky and Abigail will both be um, competing in the first ever state water tower competition as well. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, Ms. Tolliver, City of Griffin, and scholars, would you uh, join us in the center for a picture, please? Congratulations to our winners. Next we have the uh, Science Fair first place winners, Ms. Tolliver. Good evening, Chairman, Board Members, and Superintendent Dr. Simmons. This year, Griffin Spalding County Schools hosted the first Science and Engineering Fair in more than 10 years. Although it was a modest reboot with only 14 projects representing three of our six secondary schools, we're looking forward to bigger and better competitions in upcoming years. The first place winners were given the prestigious opportunity to participate in the Griffin RESA Regional Science and Engineering Fair, where they were judged by experts in their fields in categories ranging from animal sciences to mathematics and computer sciences. Students, and in students compete in junior and senior divisions for the opportunity to advance to the Georgia Science and Engineering Fair held in Athens, Georgia. And senior projects may advance to the International Science and Engineering Fair. This evening, we recognize the following students for their outstanding accomplishments in the GSCS Science and Engineering Fair and Griffin Risa Regional Science and Engineering Fair. Those students are Zion Hendley, Rehoboth Road Middle School, first place honors in the district and regional junior division category, advancing to the Georgia Science and Engineering Fair with her project titled, The Flammability Effect of Fabric Softener on Bedding. She also received the U.S. Metric Association Award and the Thermal Fisher Scientific Junior Innovators Award, Challenge Award. Wow. Zion Henley. Sky Odawarin, Kennedy Road Middle School, first place honors in both the district and regional junior division category and advancing to the Georgia Science and Engineering Fair with her project titled, It's All in the Wax. Ms. Kaden Skelton, first place honors in the district junior division. <laughs> Lawson Stansberry, first place honors in the district junior division. And 
Aloisa Ortega Gonzalez, first place division in the district senior division. We'd like to honor all of the students for their amazing accomplishments and look forward to everything they do in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ms. Tolliver and scholars, you would join us for a picture. Next, we have the uh, 2023 Regional Literacy Days competition winners, Ms. Goodman and Ms. Potter. Greetings, Chairman Brown, board members, and Superintendent Simmons. On February 8, 2023, Griffin Risa held its annual Literacy Days competition. GSCS district winners in grades three through five completed against, competed against other districts in the region in the following categories, poetry, resuscitation, where students were able to recite a selected poem of their choice, ready writing, where students were given a prompt to write to, and drama, where students could express their creativity. Zoe Henley, a fourth grade student at Future Road Elementary, placed first in the poetry resuscitation category. We also have Callie Williams, a third grade student at Future Road Elementary, who placed first in the ready writing category. <coughs> They both received a trophy and certificate. Congratulations and job well done, scholars. And on February 9th, the very next day, the Griffin, um, Griffin Risa held their annual Literacy Days competition for grades six through eight. Again, GSES district winners in grades six through eight competed against other districts in the region in the same areas, poetry recitation, ready writing, and drama. Ophelia Maddie, a sixth grade student at Rehoboth Road Middle School, placed first in ready writing for her grade level. She received a trophy and certificate from Griffin Risa. Congratulations and job well done. Anyone from Rehoboth Road here as well? Yes. Come on up. All the babies. Rehoboth Road, Future. Yes. Right. <laughs> Members, if you would join us up front for a photo. that Gary and Akita Henley are in the building. How y'all doing to the Henleys? Y'all doing all right back there? Good to see you. And uh, continuing on with our district spelling bee winner, Miss Goodman. Thank you. And congratulations again to our Literacy Day winners. So on December 15th, 2022, Griffin Spalding County <laughs> School Systems held our annual spelling bee competition. School winners from each elementary and middle school competed for the title of GSCS Spelling Bee Champion. After multiple spelling and vocabulary rounds, Kennedy Road Middle School student Shanice Scott won with the word pioneered. The Griffin Spalding County Association of Educators awarded her with a gift card and a trophy, and she will go on to compete in the Georgia Association of Educators Regional B in Conyers this Friday, this Saturday, February 25th, 
2003. Congratulations, Shanice Scott. Miss Scott, come on up. <laughs> you already famous, you on billboards and stuff. Congratulations, Shanice, and we wish you the very, very best as you represent us this Saturday. Before we uh, move on, would, could we have parents of these students that we just recognized stand and be recognized also, or any family members or any faculty from the schools represented, just to give you all a shout out? Thank you. Congratulations to all our winners. Dr. Simmons with the GSCS Communications Department. Thank you, Mrs. McDonald. Good evening, board members, chairperson, family, friends, and invited guests. It is my distinct honor to share with you, I hold in my left and right hand, a combination of six different awards that were awarded to our communications department on behalf of the Georgia School Public Relations Association, also <clears throat> known as GSPRA. And what I'm gonna quickly do is ask Miss uh, Laura Bieber, I call her Laura Justin Bieber, it's an inside joke, but uh, I'll ask Miss Laura Bieber, uh, Mr. Adam Pugh, if you'll come forward. Uh, they make up two thirds of our communications team. Um, Mr. Brian Miller, who is not able to join us, would be the third uh, and final member of our communications team. But on February 9th, I received an email from the president, Mr. Jason Halcom of GSPRA, indicating that Griffin Spalding County Schools had been awarded six different recognitions, five of them being gold standard, the highest rating, and one of them being silver. What I'd like to do is just share with you those recognitions very quickly. Gold Award in Excellence for Newsletter Magazine, which is our GSCS Community Communicator. That's our quarterly communication uh, newsletter that we send out throughout the community. We also gold, gold Award of Excellence for Videography Electronic Media, our GSCS Portrait of gra Graduate Video Series. That's where we uh, you know, took video compilations of recent graduates, talked to them about their educational experience, as well as what their lifelong goals are in moving forward. Uh, as well as a gold, gold Award of Excellence for our special event, our 2021 Education Celebration. We also have a gold award for excellence in our image and identity package, the GSCS rebrand. We have our gold award of excellence for our calendar, the 22-23 district calendar. And then we received, or they received, a silver award for our special purpose pub publication, the GSCS Roadmap to Success brochure. That's the district strategy map strategic plan. And I wanted to share with you board members as well as those of you in the community that are online or in person my profound appreciation for this three-person team, uh, mainly because of their commitment to developing a brand, their commitment to telling our story about our people, and these six different certificates indicate that our story, our people, and our brand is making a difference. So thank you on behalf of our entire Board of Education. Thank you very much.
They do a tremendous job. Thank you, Adam, Laura. I also wanted to publicly thank Adam and Laura for Love is in the Air uh, this past week for Valentine's where we um, highlighted our couples uh, that work for the system, and that was really interesting to, uh, to read and enjoy, so I really appreciate you doing that. just wanted to publicly thank you. You guys are uh, top-notch. Really appreciate everything you do for us. And um, as I've mentioned before, if we don't get our story out, nobody else is going to tell it. It's our job to tell it, and you all do a tremendous job. Thank you. Mr. Brown, that concludes our recognition. It's been a great night. Thank you. So much, Ms. McDonald. All right, we are now going to public comments. Mrs. Ray, is there anybody? No public comments. All right, we're going to allow our guests to leave and do a two-minute recess. <laughs>
go ahead. Go ahead. All right, we're back in motion in the ocean. All right, now consent agenda. You see several items listed under the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of this board for the record? Mr. Holmes is excused. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we accept the uh, consent agenda as presented. Thank you so much. It's been properly motioned by the Vice Chair, Will Doss. Second. It has been seconded by the Dean of this board, Mrs. Barbara Jo Cook. What is the pleasure of this board by voting by raising your right hand? All right. Let the record reflect that Mr. Holmes is excused from this vote and it passes 4 0. All right. We are now on action items. APTG, Mr. Adam Pugh. All right. Chairman Brown, Superintendent Simmons, Board of Education, I bring to you an action item for APTG uh, to design new district websites for the district and for all of the schools uh, and a new app and a new communication platform. Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, GSCS has been using the current website provided by Catapult since 2018. Uh, websites traditionally should be updated every five years. The current website has some limitations when being viewed on mobile devices, so tablets or phones, uh, and, and that is the primary device uh, that users access our websites from. Um, APTG offers more functionality and, and integration capability or efficiency for a comparable price to the Catapult product. Um, <coughs> APTG also provides a parent communication platform uh, that will send recorded phone calls, uh, text message and emails and, and integrate messages across all of our social media platforms and websites um, with ease. Uh, and so that may allow us in the future to save some money if we so choose uh, with some redundancy with our current parent link uh, application and, and platform. Uh, the recommendation uh, is to approve the purchase of a new website and app design and the use of APTG's integrated communication platform for the district website and all GSCS school websites at a cost of $40,000. Thank you so much, Mr. Pew. Board members, you have heard and you're hearing the presentation that Mr. Pew, that Mr. Pew provided for APTG. What is the pleasure of this board? So moved. It has been properly motioned by <laughs> Dean Cook. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. McDonald. Please vote with yes when your name is called. Dean Cook. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Leader Holmes. Yes. Vice Chairman Doss. Yes. Ms. McDonald. Yes. Brown. Yes. It has been properly motioned to second. 5 0 vote. It is approved. Thank you. Next up. Mr. Robert Bow Wow Wow Yippee Yo Yippee Yay Wheeler, Atkinson Elementary School Kitchen Steamer Purchase. Chairman Brown, board members, Superintendent Dr. Simmons. The Griffin Spalding County School Nutrition Department is seeking the approval to purchase a steamer at $28,425.97. The funds will come from the Griffin Spalding County School Nutrition account. A little background the current steamer in Atkinson has both become unsafe and cannot be repaired. Steamers are basically large pressure cookers. So when those steam tanks start to deteriorate like that, you have to replace them. So at this time, we uh, went out, got three quotes, and Strategic came in at the lowest cost. So it is recommended to the board that they approve the purchase of the Cleveland brand steamer at a cost of $28,425.97. Thank you so much, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, you have heard the presentation for item two, Axis Elementary School Kitchen Steamer Purchase. What is the pleasure of this board? All right, thank you so much. We uh, hear Mr. Wheeler's presentation and we are accepting the uh, motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation to purchase. Is there a second? Second. It has been motioned by Leader Holmes and seconded by Dean Cook. Will you raise your hand to vote yes or no? For yes, raise your right hand. All right, approved, 5-0. All right, Mr. Bruce Ballard, Future Road Elementary School Renovation Bid. 
Good evening, Chairman Brown, board members, and Dr. Simmons. I'm glad to be here tonight to um, move forward with the next uh, project we have on the books, um, bring it to you for review and approval. Um, this is the Future Road Elementary School Renovations and Modification Project. And um, after months of design and effort, uh, we put that out to bid and had ended up with three um, bids on that project. And it did, uh, as we had talked about over the last several months so with inflation and other things and concerns about cost um, going up a little bit, um, the costs were a little bit more than what we originally had budgeted. Um, but we did add, actually add some additional items in there, partly because of some of the needs that culminated during the design phase, um, where we had to take out some larger sections of ceilings and so forth to um, put mechanical equipment up on the mezzanine, um, and then some additional cleaning and painting efforts that were, were also needed. Um, so we, we feel like we're, we're getting a good return on our investment with a little bit of additional um, funds that it, that it cost. And uh, with that and our good revenue that has flowed in from our splash uh, can easily be covered to go ahead and complete the entire project. So with that being the case, it is recommended the Griffin Spalding Board of Education approve the lowest overall base bid price of $3,881,000 submitted by Media Construction Company for the Future Road Elementary School Renovations and Modification Project. Thank you so much, Mr. Ballard. Board members, we have heard the presentation from Mr. Ballard. Uh, the superintendent is also recommending that the Griffin Spalding County School Board of Education approve the lowest overall base bid submitted to MEJA Construction Co. What is the pleasure of this board? So moved to accept. It's been properly motioned by Ms. McDonald. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Leader Holmes. Uh, those in favor, raise your right hand. 5 0 vote approved. Thank you. Chair, could I have a point of privilege? Please? Absolutely. Uh, well, Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard, can you come back? Was at the uh, podium. I, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Ballard. Uh, <clears throat> he, he, he made something happen, and I don't know who all else, but we had a community uh, event, as you know, at the auditorium Sunday, and I thank uh, the board members that, that were present to support it, but just to let you know, we were eight, we uh, we made contact. We had about 180 people, and they actually made uh, open up eight new cases uh, through FEMA, and they were able to do a couple of uh, appeals. And uh, the big thing about it, we uh, we were able to raise money to help uh, families. So I just want to thank Bruce publicly for making that happen. Uh, I know I'm always asking him to do stuff sometime at the last minute, but he always make it happen. So uh, I just want to thank him for making that happen. No problem at all. Thank you so thank much. You, and thank you so much, Mr. Ballot, for making it happen for him. All right, next up, Ms. Barbara Austin, Abbott Registration and Travel. Good evening, Chairman Brown esteemed board members and our own superintendent, Dr. Simmons. It is a pleasure to come before you this evening with a presentation from our leader in teacher effective D division requesting approval of a one-year partnership with Avid at a cost not to exceed $200,000 for the 2023-2024 school year using ARP ESSER III funds. <clears throat> Just a little background regarding Avid. We did implement AVID last summer in our middle school, so we thank you for approval of that. We are coming before you to request approval to implement AVID in our high schools for the 2023-2024 school year. And as we know, the advancement via individual determination, also known as AVID, college reg readiness system is designed to help school systems increase student achievement by closing the opportunity gap by preparing students for college readiness and success in a global society. It is at this time that we come before you for a recommendation to continue implementation of AVID in our high schools in the 23-24 school year. Thank you so much, Ms. Austin, our Director of Federal Programs. As you see in your notes, it is recommended for the Griffin Spalding Board of Education to approve a one-year partnership with AVID at a cost not to exceed $200,000. What is the pleasure of this board? Are there any questions first? Are there any questions, comments, or concerns for this item? What is the pleasure of this board? 
It has been properly motioned by Leader Holmes. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded by Vice Chairman Doss. All those in favor, vote by raising your right hand. All right, 5-0, approve. Thank you. Next up, last but not least, under this is money back yo, Mr. Byron Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, good to see you this evening. Uh, the superintendent recommends approval of Tyler Technologies Incorporated, specifically Munis Software, as our new ERP system for the Griffin Spalding County School System moving forward. A little bit of background, we've had a uh, information memo that we provided about a month ago to the board in written form. We had a presentation, formal presentation, about two weeks ago for the Board of Education. Uh, this is to replace our HR and accounting software and some other modules for budget planning, et cetera, for the school district. We've been using MacLear, which is a version of uh, next generation Harris Solutions for probably 20 to 30 years here in the district. Uh, and we do feel like it's relatively antiquated in moving to the Munis platform, which in your packet you should have, I believe, 30 school districts, some of them really around us that use this uh, software to put us into a new operating environment moving forward. Uh, we are proposing to use SourceWell, which is a cooperative pur purchasing program, and I've listed again our, um, our vendor number with them. And the, the big thing about this is our American Rescue Plan, or ARP, S or 3 money, has been approved in advance by the state. <clears throat> we have a $1.4 to $1.5 million line item in there to implement our software. So the reason we're requesting it now is we have an implementation timeline we'll have to get together. Um, uh, the the uh, conversions of our items that are not on a recurring basis, if we can pay for that out of our ESSER 3 money, that is a big win for the school district. It's not hitting our tax money, uh, our state and local revenues. So if, if we can get that done now, it would be better for the district. Uh, so with that being said, it's recommended that the Griffin Spalding Board of Education approve Tyler Technologies, specifically Munis Software, as our new ERP system for the school district not to exceed the budgeted amount of $1.4 million to be paid out of our S or 3. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the presentation from Mr. Moneybag Yo, Byron Jones, our Chief Financial Officer. It is recommended that the Griffin Spalding County Schools Board of Education approve Tyler Technology as our new ERP system for the school district, not to exceed the budgeted amount of $1.4 million. What is the pleasure of this board? Thank you so much. It's been motioned by Leader Holmes. Is there a second? Second. second. It has been seconded by Ms. McDonald of the Fifth. What is the pleasure of the board if you would vote by raising your right hand? 5-0, approved. All right, presentations and discussion. We're back with Mr. Byron Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is our January financial report. Uh, I'm pleased to present the, the tax revenues have come in for the majority of what was in the last of uh, the uh, tax digest year that is for this fiscal year. As you can see on our balance sheet and our general fund, our reserve is creeped up to close to $50 million now. Again, that will then start to reduce as our uh, tax allocation start to reduce for the next few months of the year. Over to the right, you can see nutrition's balance sheet. We always tell you about this as well is up to around $2.7 million at this current time. Uh, of the operating year. Page two is our general fund financial statement, 26.3 uh, million for the month, for only in one month is what we received. So now we are now operating at the bottom to a positive amount for the year of $12.3 million uh, that we are in uh, excess of revenue over expenses. And again, that's because we received approximately $21 million in tax revenues in the month of January. Page three, we've been having some zeros in that top yellow uh, row, but now we have started receiving some of those monies from the Department of Education, so that has turned our cash flow even to a more positive situation. Again, this just shows our revenues and expenses for our grants. Page four is our nutrition uh, operating statement, 4.5 million in approximate revenues so far this year, 3.6 million in expenses for a fund balance in that current year of close to $900,000. Uh, at this point through the month of January. Our investments, uh, you can see $26.2 million uh, is what we are, are currently investing. I do want to make show one change to you. Over in the rate column, again, I always tell you the rate's gone up now to about 4.2%. The district is also uh, managing or is it the fiduciary for something called the Melton Fund. If you, some of you that have been on the board would know what I'm talking about. It's approximately a million dollars. Uh, we were solicited from uh, Mr. Melton 
to see about reinvesting those funds. So what we did is put those in some CDs to, to lock those in from six months to a year. It, and uh, the average rate's 4.75%. And once that get, that was a quicker way to get back to a million dollars. And then when that balance gets over a million, Mr. Melton explained to me that he solicits the superintendent on a spending plan uh, for resources for the school district. So the, the key is to get that back as a principal of a million and the excess over a million will then be able to be spent for the district. So we reinvested that. You'll see when you get down about three quarters down the page, that item is 4.75%. So that was a change from the prior month. And that'll stay like that to some of these CDs start renewing. And our last page is our December SPLOS, $1.3 million. It'll be interesting to see when I come in here next month, the tornado impact maybe on the, the January receipts. So 1.3 million, that's, that's one of the highest ones probably we've ever had. So. That's coming in the month of December with shopping, et cetera. So, any questions? All right, the presentation from Mr. Jones. Are there any questions at this time? All right, thank you so much. Next up, school start times, Dr. Donna Warren. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Good evening. Yo. I want to present to you a um, culmination of a lot of work to take an examination of our current school day times and how we can enhance um, these times to better serve our stakeholders. Of course, we have three non-negotiables in our school district. Be professional, accountable, and communicate effectively. You will see one of the slides, a lot of communication took place with our stakeholders. Um, we have five, liter five areas that we focus on, literacy, and enrollment, attendance, discipline, and solving. This pyramid here is called the results pyramid, where it um, maintains that a person's experiences and beliefs will impact their actions and their results. And lastly, this framework, you see a problem, own it, you solve it, and you take ownership and do it. Um, that's what we tried to do and taking a look at this process starting back in November to culminate this evening with a solution that will better serve the needs of our stakeholders and take some uh, pressure off of our transportation department. Our mission, of course, is to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. And when it comes to a vision, we want to have a distinctive brand, strong leaders, and great schools. As we take a look at revamping our school day times the next school year, um, this is our strategic plan, our roadmap to success. Um, I put a star beside some areas that it impacts. Um, the three goal areas star are organizational and operational efficiency to support our transportation department to both be organized and um, operate more efficiently. Family and community engagement, and in the end, it's gonna impact student achievement. <coughs> As it comes to the um, blue boxes, the performance objectives, we want to allow resources and to student and staff needs, again, providing efficient and effective operations, and we want to present a safe and supportive learning environment. We feel these times will support a more, um, an environment more conducive to learning when it comes to time and delivery of students. Thank you, Lonnie. What you see on the screen now is our current bell structure, indicating the, um, the time the doors open. The first bell rings, which um, starts instruction at each level, the dismissal time, and the total hours of students in school. What we were trying to shoot for was to have a minimum of 45 minutes in the AM and PM between delivering students. Um, in the morning, there's a 20 minute gap between the high school and the elementary. And between elementary and middle school in the morning, it's only 30 minutes, well below 45. In the afternoon, dismissal. I'm at 2.30, the bus is at the elementary schools, picking up kids to deliver them and get to the high school to pick up kids. They only have a 30 minute window, which is very, very short. Uh, middle schools, from three to 3.40, the time between high schools and middle schools is 40 minutes. 
Again, our target was to shoot for between 45 and 60 minutes between loads um, to have a productive and more conducive operational window to support our, our students. Again, starting back in November, November 1st, did a lot of um, public engagement with stakeholders to gather their feedback through a variety of methods. Um, there were five public forums, the last <coughs> one being virtual. We discussed it with our administrators in November, January, and February. Um, we took a look at some research findings on sleep and adolescence. We gave a survey to all of our employees in which we have um, 288 responses. And lastly, we did a thought exchange, sent it out back on January 12th. It stayed open for about two weeks. That thought exchange platform went out to all staff <coughs> members, uh, parents, and students. We had 672 participants, 313 thoughts, and 5,631 ratings of those thoughts. So this is the engagement that we receive from our stakeholders. This slide indicates uh, our solution for a more efficient and effective um, time frame to transport our students to and from schools in the AM and PM. I have a comparison for what we currently do in the 22-23 school year, and in red, what we propose to do in the 23-24 <coughs> school year. And below there, there are three notes for each level that indicates um, the difference in the doors opening, the start time, and how the student's instruction day is impacted. I want you to take a look at the third column doors open 23-24, you will see that 45-minute window that we so desperately need to get our students to and from school safely, especially being short of bus drivers. Um, by our current routes, we need about 100, 101 bus drivers. We currently have 80 to 81. So we're about 20, 22 short. We're constantly um, engaging in recruitment efforts to hire drivers, which we do, and then we'll lose the driver. Um, to what have you. Also, when it comes to accounting for um, bus driver um, absences, sort of hard, and we're struggling daily. Um, Mr. Harris and his, and his crew, my hats off to them, um, making it work to combine routes and whatnot. So that doors open 23, 24, gives us that 45 minute window that we desire. Where the elementary schools doors open at 7, high schools 7.45, middle schools 8.30. If you take a look over at the student dismissal 23-24, in red, you see that the um, elementary students will be dismissed at 2.30, high school students will be dismissed at 3.15, and middle school students will be dismissed at 4 p.m giving us that 45 minute window um, to transport students in the afternoon. Um, I will say that for sure, the columns that I just reviewed, the doors opening and student dismissal, they will for sure remain the same. The first bell in which instruction will start, um, they may change somewhat uh, what, what has to happen once um, this time is made effective. These times are made effective, Mr. Harris and his crew will do some logistical work to um, reformat time, the time frame for each route that we have. And there are um, a lot of routes. How many routes would you say we have, Mr. Harris? Excuse me, between the 83 routes that we have, we're looking at probably 20 to 40 routes that we have in the Thank you. Well, they will make that happen. Um, so again, doors open, student dismissal, those are pretty much written in stone. 
the time instruction starts will, will be a little bit, hopefully, shorter to give students more time on instruction. Um, and talking about the high school in particular, um, because we only have two high schools, you're pretty much dividing the county into two parts. Elementary schools, we have, um, I think, 11 elementary schools, so they have a much smaller district to transport students in. We have four middle schools. You cut the um, county into fourths, so um, that's the size of it. So the higher you go, the, um, the additional time and, and space and distance you have to travel. All right, um, the next slide, the last slide, our next steps are to continue our marketing campaign to inform all stakeholders of new start and end times for each school level. And as I just mentioned, for Mr. Harris and his department to perform the logistical work to reconfigure all bus route times for the AM as well as the PM to result in new bus routes for the 23-24 school year. So at this time, are there any questions that I can address? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the presentation from Dr. Warren. Are there any questions at this time? Mr. Chair, no questions, but just a comment. I want to thank you for all of the hard work of going through to do the forums, to do the uh, reaching out to parents, trying to get in the involvement. I know board members had an opportunity to, to be at some of those, and I appreciate board members for doing that. Uh, all the more that we're trying to communicate effectively. I realize it will still catch a few people off guard once it is been changed, um, but you've done all that you can do. Thank you. Leader Holmes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with, with this, not, not so much the entire presentation, Mrs. Dr. Simmons, could we, uh, through Mr. Ms. Pugh, could we get that slide there in the Griffin Daily News or on, on uh, I know we do a lot on our social media, but uh, can, can we make sure we saturate our uh, media outlets with that schedule that we're proposing? Yeah, yes, sir. So the intent, as Dr. Warren mentioned, we, we will uh, deploy a full-scale marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect that there will, there will still be conversations to be had as to yes. how we got to this point or right. What did we do? And so we, we will make sure that we effectively communicate the change from this year to next year, how we got to this point, why we believe this was the best solution. Uh, and we'll do that for the duration of this school year. We'll double down over the summer months to make sure that, that we have effectively touched all of our parents. We'll make sure that it resides in our registration department. We'll send it out to our local media outlets it will reside uh, under the announcements on the district's website as well as the school's website. Uh, we'll, we'll try and keep the dialogue open to make sure that people understand the work that transportation will take between now and the end of the school year, but also to make sure that we have a means of assessing that this decision, these changes, were in the best interest of making sure that our capacity lines up with our goals and that we can remain as efficient as we can. So I gave you a very long-winded, yes, sir, we'll make it happen, but I wanted to share with you how we intend okay. to go about that. Okay. And, and I thank uh, you, you, Mr. Harris, because I don't think, just, just me, just me, I, I don't think some realize that not only our system, but all over the country, people are having problems with transportation and they're having to double up routes and, and uh, you know, uh, so I thank Mr. Harris for kind of explaining the route and the runs, you know, mm -hmm. so people can get an idea, but it's not just a Griffin Spalding County school system thing. It's a nationwide Correct. Uh, thing. So uh, I, I, again, like Mr. Doss, thank, thank you all for your hard work on this because I know it's uh, problematic uh, trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So, uh, but I, I just wanted to, like I was telling Mr. Doss earlier, you know, uh, we, we've had all of these forms and, and uh, someone recently as last week contacted me. I heard, I heard, I said, well, 
Uh, we, we tried to communicate and make ourselves available, but if no one takes us up on that offer, you know, that's information they're not going to get. So I know there will be uh, hit and misses, but I, I feel comfortable saying that we did our due diligence. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I'll quickly note, board members, um, Dr. Warren talked about the use of thought exchange, and, and just as a reminder, um, the, the way that the thought exchange process works, consider the 5,000 plus ratings. So the, the way that that works, it's almost like um, a comment to someone's comment. So imagine being in a room mm -hmm. where you have upwards of 700 people present, 300 comments were made, and for each comment, roughly 18 comments about the comment was made. Uh, and so again, that's where the breadth of the feedback came from. Uh, it was wide. Uh, it involved, you know, students, staff, parents. It involved times. It involved uh, personnel and personal matters to take into account. Uh, what we tried to come up with was a means to resolve one problem without creating another. And, and, and so that was, that was the impetus. Uh, you know, Mr. Harris's department gave us a charge, but we also did not want to simply move that problem from one side of the street to the next. And so we understand that some will feel as if though they didn't have as much voice uh, or they didn't have as much opportunity. Uh, as you mentioned, we did the best that we could. Hopefully, um, when those opportunities present themselves in the future, we'll be able to capture more people, capture more engagement, more involvement, but, but this is where we've landed. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, thank you so much, thank Dr. You. Warren. All right, we are moving along on the agenda. Are there any board member comments at this time? Mr. Dallas, you recognize? I just want to make sure that everyone is using their opportunities to tell people about the importance, if they have been affected by this disaster, this tornado, to register with FEMA. Um, we had the opportunity on Sunday, Mr. Holmes referred, to, re, referred back to that. Uh, not only do they need to register with FEMA, but they need to apply for the SBA. Whether they're renters, whether they're homeowners, whether they're small businesses, whatever it might be. Because that gives, if I'm not mistaken, that gives the opportunity that if they are declined by FEMA to go back to FEMA if they don't do that process. And so it is very important that our community, we get the word out. Those of us may have not been affected, but you may walk, come across somebody that has been affected. Um, they need to go through that process. FEMA is only gonna be here, I believe, until the 17th of March. And so they'll be pulling out, and we need to get that word out. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Mr. Chair, can I just add to Mr. Dawes? Yes, Mr. Mr. Leader, go ahead. I, I just wanna re reiterate uh, something that uh, was, was told to us on, on Sunday. We have a high rent um, population. And they, the gentleman uh, really highlighted that the renters need to uh, get a registration number with FEMA because mm -hmm. they can get the money that they need for rental assistance and I think it's for like 18 months and if you need any more you come back they do it on the 18 month block the homeowner that own the home that they are renting from should have insurance and they go through their own process but we, we he made that perfectly clear and uh, like Mr. Doss uh, stated you know we need to make sure especially in our school system students parents you know that were affected, they need to take advantage while we have them right here in our community. Thank you. No problem at all. Is there anything to my right? All right, I just wanna say uh, thank you to Mr. Hodo and the folks with Grace, Leader Holmes. Uh, it was definitely a uh, spirit-filled program. Uh, Pastor Duff did an amazing job, uh, you know, speaking and proclaiming, so. I just want to say thank you for the invite, Leader Holmes and others. Also, uh, board members, last week, a week before last, uh, Dr. Taylor passed out to us the CSIP and budget meeting schedule. Uh, 
full schedule here. So if you're able to attend those budget meetings, please check in with the superintendent's office so that we know that you will be here. Uh, last but not least, February is Black History Month. And there are some amazing female educators that I would love to give a shout out to. Lucy Laney, who was the American educator uh, in 1883, founded the first school for black children in Augusta, Georgia. In 1974, uh, Laney was selected by Governor Jimmy Carter as one of the first three African-American honors by having their portraits installed in the Georgia State Capitol. A little history fact there, there are eight African-Americans that have a portrait in the state capitol. Mayor McLeod Bethune started a school for African-American girls in Daytona Beach, Florida. Many of you may know it as Bethune-Cookman University. Uh, Dorothy Height focused on the issues of African-American women, including unemployment, illiteracy, and voter awareness. Height is credited as the first leader in the civil rights movement to recognize inequality for women and African-Americans as problems that should be considered as a whole. She was the first president of the National Council of Negro Women, and she served there for 40 years. One of my favorite educators is Marva Collins. Dismayed at the low levels of learning that she felt some scholars were experiencing particular areas of Chicago, so she started West Side Preparatory School specifically for the purpose of teaching low-income black children. Collins taught children deemed disabled by the Chicago public school system, and she said to have the data to prove that students were teachable and they were, over, able, they were able to overcome. Last but not least, uh, one that I, when I was teaching, I would always channel my Harriet Ball energy. Harriet Ball's a phenomenal educator, inspiration behind KIPP charter school system, taught for 36 years in Houston and Austin school districts. She went on to become a motivational speaker, training thousands of teachers around the world for her highly regarded techniques. She would put music, she would do songs, teaching them how to measure, how to do fractions. And so um, we just want to thank the, uh, all educators in our district and a shout out to these phenomenal uh, females who have made history in education. We do have executive session, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to go into executive session to discuss and deliberate upon the disciplinary action dismissal or non-renewal of personnel. Mr. Chair, I make that motion. Okay, thank you so much. It has been properly motioned and seconded to go into executive session for the reason just stated. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, thank you so much. We are now ready for executive session. Oh, also, we have a guest here with us, uh, and I just, I just wrote your name down, Chase. Chase is with, uh, is standing in for Elizabeth O'Neill tonight. Thank you, Chase. Anything you want to say? Appreciate you, brother.
We are out of executive session. Just to, before we come out of executive session, I want to reiterate the reasons why we went into executive session, session to discuss and deliberate upon disciplinary action, dismissal or non-renewal of personnel, and to discuss uh, lease of property. So now that we have updated that, what is the pleasure of this board to come out of executive session? Second. All right, it's been properly motioned by Mr. Doss and seconded by Mr. Holmes to come out of executive session. All in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. 5-0, we are out of executive session. All right, we are back in public session and we are now ready for the adjournment of this meeting. What is the pleasure of this body? It has been properly motioned by Ms. McDonald and seconded by Leader Holmes. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your right hand.